Hey guys, it's Lisa with Are You My Cousin? And it's Thursday, so it's time for another Facebook Live. And I have made it for two weeks in a row, which is really good for me this fall with all my traveling. So, uh, but it is nice to be home, actually, guys. I, I really am enjoying spending time at home and, and getting back into the routine of researching and writing and, and chatting with all my genealogy friends. So I have a really fun treat for us today. I have the ladies from Preserving Your Heritage, and we are going to be talking about our old family photos. But before I get to that, a couple of th couple of housekeeping tips, guys. Um, first of all, I just want to welcome everyone here. And I appreciate you taking time out to come and join our Facebook Live. If you are just joining me, if you don't mind giving me a thumbs up or a hello in the comment section, that lets me know that people are seeing us okay. And um, everything's coming through all right. So that's a good, that's a big help for me. Uh, the other thing, just to let you know, if you are watching this on a replay um, as on YouTube, know that any links that we talk about, that I talk about dropping in the comments, you will find those links in the description below. So if you're watching on YouTube, this is a Facebook Live replay, and you will find all the information in the description. Hey, Kelly, thank you so much. Yay, good. Oh, Pat's here. Hey, Pat. Glad you could make it. Um, so wonderful couple things coming up. So next week, watch the Facebook page and watch your emails. There is, um, we're starting our five day digitize your photos challenge next Monday on October 14th, because we need to get our photographs out of the shoebox. Me included guys. Absolutely. Me included. So watch for that. You can either do it through your email. You can do it through Facebook. You, um, just some people prefer to do it through their email. Some would rather not get the emails. That's fine. You'll see the instructions in your email. Um, so you shouldn't have any problems. But any questions, always you can drop me an email or ask me on Facebook. I'll be happy to do that. Hey, Lily, so glad you could find it and make it here today. Um, so we've got that coming up. Then watch for in a couple of weeks. I'm super excited because I have a, a new ebook that's coming out. I had a lot of fun writing it. It is actually a rewrite of an old book that I did a number of years ago. And it's about three times as long now. So I had a lot of fun. Um, I've enjoyed it putting that together. And I think you guys will enjoy it as well. So why are we here today? We are here to talk about photographs. And I have my friends um, from Preserving Your Heritage. I have Michelle Doyle and Dorothy Tucker. And these are fantastic ladies, guys. I met them. Um, guys, I don't remember where I met you the first time. <laughs> um, uh, I'm sure it was at a genealogy. Yes, probably. Yeah. Probably was. Yes, they're here in North Carolina as well. And we are going to talk about photographs. That's going to be kind of our theme for the next couple of weeks anyway. And I wanted to bring them on because they are masters at um, organizing the old family photos, preserving, digitizing photographs. And I had some definite questions I wanted to ask them about when it comes to taking care of our photographs. Now, just so you know, guys, I do know that there's a little bit of a sound issue on their end. So, um, yeah, just bear with us best we can. And I will try to repeat. If things aren't clear, I'll make sure I repeat what they're saying so that you guys can hear it. Um, sometimes when you're just doing tech and doing things live, you just have to go with the best you can get. And since I'm a one person tech person, <laughs> a one person show over here. I'm kind of my IT department, which gets me in a lot of my own trouble sometimes, as you'll know. So, hey, Joe, glad you could join us. Okay, so I am going to actually take my photo down. Um, so you can just see Dorothy and Michelle because we got a twosome. <laughs> we got a two for one. And ladies, we are so glad you are here. Can you just tell us real briefly, or introduce us, introduce yourselves and let us know a little bit about what you do with preserving your heritage. Okay, I'm Dorothy Tucker, and it's Michelle, and we have been in the photo organizing business for about six years, and we have learned so much about the right ways and the wrong ways to organize photos and to scan photos and to preserve photos. So we're excited to share a little bit about what we've learned so you don't have to make the same mistakes. That is fantastic. Um, well, we're glad to hear, we're glad that you could join us and help us today too. So, um, oh, and guys, if you have questions for them and you want me to ask them, put them in the comments, put your questions in the comments and I will make sure we get your questions asked. Um, so, cause I'm monitoring those as we go. So, hey, Debbie, glad you could join us again today. 
All right, guys. So here's my question. My first question for you guys. <laughs> um, so I am running this, the challenge, the digitize your photo challenge next uh, week, because I really probably started this because I need to get my, sh my, my photos out of my shoe box. Um, they, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed. Yes, there are some still in shoe boxes and I need to get them and preserve them. But what is the best, do you guys have recommendations for the type of scanner to use? I know I've had a couple of people ask me and other than flatbed, I wasn't really sure what else to say. The for home? Yeah, for home. The, there's a couple of things you need to think about um, before you even think about the scanner that you're gonna use because depending on how many photos you have, depending on the quality that you need, depending on um, the scan uh, resolution that you want, you mm -hmm. might be better off sending them out. I know people may not want to hear this, but you might be better off sending them out because scanners aren't cheap and there can be True. a learning curve on them as well. So you, you kind of want to sort of do a cost benefit, whether it makes sense to buy a scanner for your home or mm -hmm. whether it makes sense to, to, do, to send them out. If you do decide to buy one for home, I would go with the Epson brand. Uh, okay. There's a V600. There's a V800. It's an Epson Fast Photo. Um, what is, is it? Is it the six? Yeah. Or, it's a six yeah. There's a 600 and an 800, depending mm -hmm. on on what you want with it. Mm -hmm. uh, those tend to be the most reliable. Those tend to be the ones that professionals use. Okay. Um, in in their own scanning. And do for instance, like. When I typically scan things currently, I mean, I just have my regular computer scanner. It's a flatbed scanner mm -hmm. that I use, which is seems to be adequate just for my own personal home use. Is that mm -hmm. as long as it's a flatbed, is it still a, an acceptable type of scanner to use? Absolutely. Sure. You want to scan at the highest resolution that it will, that you can. With oh, your, that, your scanner. that's a great tip. So scan at the highest resolution, guys, that you can. That makes sense. I'm writing that down <laughs> so I can remember, guys. I'm uh, I'm writing it down so I remember. Okay. And also, if you're if you're going into other like not just photos, if you've got slides and negatives and things like that, then you really right. want to make sure that you've got a really high resolution, the 2500, the 5000 DPI's. Regular wow. photos, you can do at 300 or 600. So when okay. you're researching scanners, you need mm -hmm. to think about what you're scanning in order to make sure you're getting the right scanner to scan. Gotcha. So if we're doing something kind of at home, just kind of a, a just, you know, when you have the shoe box type thing, that can be, you said like at a 300 is kind of the minimal. 300 is the minimum. Yeah. 600 is, is, is better. better. Yep. That's good to know. I didn't know that. I'm learning stuff already, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and the type of the type of scanner will also depend, as Michelle said, on the, the types of photos that you're scanning. If you're scanning mm -hmm. more recent photos, then you can put them through the high speed scanner. But if you're doing older, fragile pictures, then you want to use that flatbed. You don't want to ever put those through a high speed scanner. Got it. Got it. Debbie says, scan at less resolution to share and send for research with cousins. Question. So what she's asking, is it better to scan at like the less re resolutions for sharing and for sending as opposed to um, the professional? Those. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Debbie. That, that makes, and that makes good sense because a lot of times I think that's what we as genealogy researchers are doing a lot of. And I should say these ladies are genealogy researchers as well. <laughs> so guys, you can, have, um, absolutely. And so I think that's what we do with them a lot. Um, you know, I, as I know, when I start to digitize more and more of my photographs, it's less about framing them or printing them and framing them and putting them out. And it's more about being able to share them through the internet, through other researching cousins. And really, um, as I know a lot of the readers know, I have a lot of unidentified photographs and it's about getting them out there yep. and getting as many eyes on them as I possibly, possibly can. So, so when it comes to, this is going to be a big question. When it comes to organizing our photographs, so we can scan photographs all day long, but we want to make sure we can find them again once we scan them. And because I see people and, and I've fallen into this trap too, where I'll scan things or even just take photograph after photograph after photograph. And then I don't have, I realize I don't, I've got them somewhere, but yeah. I have no idea where they are. 
what is if you, if as a beginner for a beginning person, what would you recommend to to avoid that? How do you have a special tip you have for labeling them a certain way or family grouping a certain way? We have a say that if you scan a mess, you're going to create a mess. Oh. So, <laughs> so it is really important to get that organizing done first. And the organizing goes the way your brain goes. So does your brain work in family groups? Does your brain work chronologically? Does your brain work by events, holidays, that sort of thing? Go ahead. Oh, hang on, guys. Grandkid alert. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No problem. No um, problem. Yeah, so you're going to organize according to, to how you would, if you, if all of your photos were in a file folder, how would they be organized? Um, and I, some people think chronologically, and that's the only way to do it. And other people think by, like she said, family groups or by person or by event. And um, so, so organizing is as personal as the photos themselves. You know, I'd never really thought about that way. And when she said, and you guys said, organize how your brain works, that makes so much sense. Because for me personally, I think in terms of family groups. In fact, that's how my um, genealogy data, you know, my file folder, that's how it's, that's how they're worked. Right. They're, it's in family right. groups. And particularly with a, a female you know, that if she is a young female in her father's household, that's where she's going to appear. And once she crosses into you know, marriage, then she's going to, I'm going to be placing her in her husband's. Right. Thing, because that's how I think. Right. Um, and that's how my brain goes. I actually once heard um, a home organizer and make a sense. She said, when you're trying to decide where to put something, ask yourself, if I were looking for it, where would I put it? Right. And I thought that's such a unique thing to come at it from the backward, <laughs> the backward end of it, right? But it's true. It's true. It's the same way with photos. If you're mm -hmm. going to be looking for it, how are you going to, how are you going to look for it? Right. And so I thought, how cool is that? And so, um, yeah, so perfect guys. That makes, that makes sense. Uh, Debbie thinks in family groups too. I have a feeling a lot of genealogy researchers think in family groups. Especially with the older photos. Yeah. Yes. But if you think, um, but if you think chronologically, mm -hmm. that would probably be my second mm -hmm. level of doing things would be family groups and then chronologically, because I do think in timelines a lot of times in my research. I and mm -hmm. you know, all you guys know that because you've you've seen my <laughs> my post on timelines because mm -hmm. I write about timelines too. Um, because I do think in that term. So that's a really good a good thought. Um so when you do when you're putting them in the grouping that fits your personality the best. And do you typically label in a certain consistent way or do you, is there a standard for that? Or is again, that just a very personal decision as to how you are going to um, label those photographs so that you can find them? Did that make sense? Well, yes. If you have a, if you have them somewhere like forever, we put store photos in, in forever. Mm -hmm. And they have, you can tag them with, with certain things. So if you organize them by family group, you can tag them by, with dates, you can tag them with events, you can tag them, you know, with, with places. other places, with, with other details that you want to, um, so that if you do go search and you say, you don't remember where you put that photo, you can search by the tag and you'll be able to find the, the photo. Gotcha. Gotcha. That makes sense. That file, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. File names aren't nearly as important as they used to be. I don't worry about file names anymore. I group, okay. I group pictures however I'm scanning them, and then I tag them. So it really doesn't matter what the actual photo is called mm -hmm. because of where it's located and then how it's tagged. Gotcha. Tag them. Okay. Yeah, Debbie says she ends each label with the initials of the cousin who gave them to me so she knows where to go for the original. That's a really smart idea. I would not well, have thought about that. Yeah, and that allows for um, ownership as well. Because that cousin yes. owns that photo. You're not taking that, you know, there's a lot of complaining going on. 
Facebook groups and things where people have stolen photos, you don't remember where you got them. So yeah, that's a great idea. That is a really good idea, Debbie. Thank you for that. I think I'm going to add that to my, to my labeling. Um, yeah, because exactly, that's exactly what's going on um, with that. Also just to be able to go to the original and know wh who's going to, to have that um, type thing. So that's a really nice, that's a nice way of doing things as well. When you guys back up your photographs, um, where do you, how do you, do you back them up? I've heard, there's a say, and you guys have told it to me and I cannot remember about like how many places you should, should have backups mm -hmm. type thing. I'm going to let you take it from there and I'm going to grab a sip of water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's called three, two, one. So you want to have at least three copies, mm -hmm. uh, usually the paper one and two digital ones. The two is two different mediums. So the hard drive on your computer, the an external hard drive, a flash drive. A, it used to be a CD. We don't recommend that anymore. Um, something online. So that's the two, two different mediums. Mm -hmm. And then one is so that at least one copy is off site. It's someplace else. It's at the it's at your cousin's in a different state. It's online someplace. It's out of your home so that there's at least one copy floating around. But if something mm -hmm. happens to you, to your physical home place, you don't lose everything. So three, two, one is the is the backup. So is the one paper or is it digital? It can be. No, the one is well, it can be. It could be either, either one. one. It could be either one. So in other words, you could actually make a flash drive and send it to your cousin to yes. to hang on to. Okay, yes. gotcha, gotcha. And then the in cloud storage or like a um, a hard drive type thing for the two, mm -hmm. and then you've got the paper. The original paper. Right. Okay. I'm learning so much and I'm making notes of this as we go. Cause as I said, we're going to do this digital digit, dig, uh, I can challenge next week. <laughs> we're going to digitize those photographs. Yeah. All right. Now I confessed that earlier in the here that I'm, so maybe I have some photos that are stored and maybe the less than optimal storage solutions. Everybody does. Um, yes. Um, as in shoe boxes, <laughs> but they're so convenient. What do you recommend kind of, a, and I'm going to, I'm going to just say what kind of frugal or low cost options are good for storing some of these, some of our older photographs. Cause I think people get kind of put off. We think, okay, we need to have X, Y, and Z, but they, a lot of the, the archival stuff is so incredibly expensive that there's it no is. way I could put my entire collection, you know, I may have to work up to it. Okay. So let, yeah, explain the ABCs and then so, we'll talk about A's. Okay. So one of the, the first things we do with, um, with clients and uh, as we talk to people about getting started organizing their pictures mm -hmm. is we talk about the ABCs. So the A photos, as you're going through your photos, the A photos are the album worthy photos. They, okay. you might not put them in an album, but they're the ones that you would be devastated if you lost them. Mm -hmm. um, the B photos are the supporting photos. They're good photos. They're, they, they are part of your life story or part of your, um, your genealogy story, but, um, but they're not those, the, they're not as, as important as the A photos. And then the C photos are the ones C is for can. They're the ones that you can throw away. They're the duplicates, the blurry ones. And probably if you've already organized or somewhat organized your um, your family photos, your older family photos, you're not going to have a lot of blurry or duplicates or mm -hmm. or those kinds of photos. But but those are the the three things. And then the um, the last one is the S photos because it's the ABCs. The S photos are the ones that help tell your story. So it might not be a great photo. It might need photo restoration work, but it's part of your story. And so maybe you only want to put your, your A photos in a box. Maybe you want to put your A and B photos in a box. Mm -hmm. um, but but those are those are some of, you know, we can't say go to Michael's and get, and get, right, a, I agree. get a box. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, archival methods, Gaylords, you know. Mm -hmm. And yes, they, it is, they're expensive up front, but think about what it is you're saving. Do you want this photo to last for generations? Mm -hmm. Do you want this photo to be well cared for and well kept? And 
by starting, like you said, little by little, by starting with those A photos and putting the money and the time into it, you're going to make sure that those photos survive generations. Mm -hmm. It's kind of that penny wise, pound foolish thing. So mm -hmm. if you go to Michael's and you get the cheap photo boxes and you at least have them together in there someplace, mm -hmm. but you're not preserving them and you're not caring for them for future generations. So you kind of need to think about what your priorities are. Mm -hmm. um, and, and everybody is different, you know, but people put, put kind of like buying insurance. You buy insurance for your house, you buy insurance for your car, you buy insurance for your stuff. So by buying these archival quality materials, you're buying insurance for your photos. Mm -hmm. so, that's actually, that's a great answer. And the prior, I like the prioritization of the ABCs because I think sometimes that's where I kind of get overwhelmed when it comes mm -hmm. to the photographs mm -hmm. because, um, you know, when I, I sit back and I look at what I have, I'm like, okay, one, just getting the, how in the world could I ever preserve them? And it's going to cost an arm and a leg to get, but that right. absolutely makes sense and gives me, it, at least for me, it gives me a sense of how to how to prioritize mm -hmm. to start. Because mm -hmm. um, obviously, if if I don't start, it'll never get done. Yeah, <laughs> so I've got to start somewhere. Yeah, so your kids aren't going to do it. Yeah, so yeah, that's a great way to do. So we had a couple questions pop up. So Kim gave us a wave. Hey, Kim, glad you could join us. Um, Lily was asking if you wanted to share, but also wanted to be able to print copies of some photographs in the future. What do you recommend? Scanning in high resolution, lower, or both? Um, she says she also thinks she already kind of answered a question, <laughs> but um, yeah, we were talking about that earlier. I think if, if I'm, if I'm saving it for myself and know that I would want to print those copies out, I'm probably going with that higher resolution and there's nothing wrong with sharing photos at a higher resolution. No, there's either. Not. I, but, but what you want to do, um, storage is cheap. It's not mm -hmm. like in the old days where it was really expensive to have a couple megs of storage. Storage is really cheap. Mm -hmm. So you want to scan, you only and you only want to do it once. So you want to scan at the highest resolution that you're comfortable with. Consider that your master set and stick that away and then just make copies. And every time you make a digital copy, you can make it at whatever resolution you need. So you need a ah. higher resolution because you're going to be printing something big. You want a lower resolution because you're going to send it off to a cousin. But that master set of high resolution, high quality scans sits back. That's that's the one that sits in the bank vault or the one that sits on your forever account or the one that sits someplace that you're not touching and you're not messing with. And then all the copies that you make, that's where you go that lower res. You just save them as a lower, you know, save them as a JPEG or save them as a lower res mm -hmm. copy. And then those are the ones that you that you play with, that you share, that you put online. That's a great that's great. A great tip on that. Um, Lily also says she has about 15 albums from a cousin to scan. Wow. That's yeah. pretty impressive. <laughs> that, but what, what I'll give you a tip about the albums, and this is just something I do um, before I go scanning, is I take digital photographs of each page and in chronological order so that I always preserve um, the family units in those. So that should something happen and if the if they're damaged in any way or you're trying to take photos out to scan, which is not a great idea, um, you, you always preserve that as well. So, and Debbie agrees on both getting the high resolution versus the lower resolution to share. So <laughs> that's great. I know there's a lot, there's a lot to these photographs. You don't realize um, that there's so much to that. Um, so any last minute? Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you guys. You, you mentioned JPEG. And if this is too big a question, just tell me. We'll save it for another time. <laughs> Go ahead. JPEG versus the, is it TIFF versus files? TIFF. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What should yeah. you be doing? I mean, TIFF is uh, larger and takes TIFF up a lot larger. of space. It does, but we're kind of back to that storage is cheap. So. Right, right. So we have, I'm an archivist as, for training. So okay. in my archivist brain, you do high resolution TIFF images. You save them forever. Dorothy is a, is a photographer and she's more practical about it. What do you need all those big files for? What do you need all those big photos for? Right. So kind of our compromise is those A photos we talked about earlier. Those mm -hmm. get scanned high resolution tip. Okay. The everyday, you know, the 14 pictures that you have to back up to create the story for that other nice, mm -hmm. big, important photo. 
those can be done at the, you know, the 300, 600 JPEG. JPEG level. Okay. That is the TIFF is considered a loss less. You can open and close the TIFF mm -hmm. folder as many times as you want. Nothing's going to affect the quality of the of the image. Mm -hmm. That JPEG, if you open and close that JPEG a lot, every time you do that, you lose a little bit of quality on that photo. So okay. then we're again back to that really important keep a master set. So if mm -hmm. you scan in JPEGs, it's even more important that you keep that master set and only play with the ones the that copy. you copy out of it. Gotcha. That makes sense. Again, that having that A, those A mm -hmm. pictures, those high mm -hmm. priority. Organize uh, before you scan. Do not run out and buy a scanner and start scanning everything you own. Organize before you scan. Answer all those questions before you start the scanning process. You'll save yourself immense amount of time and anguish later. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It sounds like so before I start my my part of the challenge next week, I will absolutely be deciding what are my A's and what are my B's and what are my C's um, to do that kind of thing. So in case you don't, I don't, I don't know if I told you the whole sound. It's basically just to digitize 10, 10 photos a day for five days so that at the end of the week, well, I'll have 50 photographs sure. digitized. Again, it's just to get people started and get people into thinking in the process of, of how they so, can. So in addition to that, maybe organize. 50 photos before you scan your 10 photos. That's right. We need to talk about, I'll have to, I'll have to pop on Sunday night and talk about organize those photos that you want to yep. scan first and, yep. and do that. That's absolutely yep. wonderful. All right. Do you have any last minute tips you want to, to give us before? And if not, you can go ahead and tell us where we can find you online. Well, the only, the only thing is we try to help people not feel guilty about it. Everybody cringes in the face you make when you say my shoebox is full of photos. <laughs> That chaos was not created in a couple weeks. You are not going to fix it in a couple weeks. So give yourself time and give yourself permission to take time to do it right. If it takes you a year, oh well. If it takes you two years, oh well. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get it done this week, so don't feel guilty about it. That's a great tip. Hey, Debbie, just ask a question. I, and I, I, actually, I know the answer, but I'm going to let them do it, Debbie, because I asked this question of them before we started the, the thing. She said, do you crop when you scan or regular size on an 8 by 10 to determine the original size? So I think she, so when you're scanning, do you do you crop as you go? No, we don't crop until we until we need to do something with that photo. Cropping takes time and it's just an extra step. But when we're ready to, to print that photo or send that photo to someone, then we go, go in and, and crop. But as long as it's just being stored somewhere, we, we don't take the time to do that. It's, the, it's photo organizing and preserving is so time consuming. We just don't take that extra time to, to do that at that right. stage. I know guys, because I, I was actually, I was telling them earlier before we started that I was um, scanning and then I would crop um, when I used to scan with my flip pal and then I would crop it out because it would have all the extra white space. And they're like, why are you doing that? <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, I really didn't need to because I'm really just preserving. I'm not actually doing anything with that photo at that moment. So mm -hmm. it's a great way to do that. Um, Debbie, did that answer your question? Um, you said something about to determine the original size. So I'm not hundred percent sure quite what you meant by that. Um, With you digital, it doesn't matter what the original size was. That's a good you point. Scanned yeah. It, you scanned it well, you can print it other sizes and we don't really mm -hmm. care what the original size was. That's a good point. Yes, you can. All right. So where can we find you ladies on online on the, in the, out in the internet? Our, our website is uh, preserving your Okay, I'm going to drop that in there for folks to find you guys at. You can do that. And how about your social media? We're on Facebook, Preserving gotcha. Your Heritage. All right, I am going to... Oh, let me see if it went in. Oh, there it goes. Yep, yeah, okay, so I got you. I got, I've got there... Um, uh, Website up there, guys. Let me give drop in their uh, Facebook link too. Um, let me just grab that real quick. And again, if you're listening to this on the YouTube replay, uh, just you'll find all of these um, links on in the description below. So Facebook, here you go. 
And check them out, guys. Now, you guys also go to a lot of the conferences, too. I, I know okay. at least in the North Carolina, the South, Southern regions. So, yeah. but you, but that's not actually true. You go to other places, too, don't you? We do. We just went to FGS in D.C. Okay. Um, we'll be at the Virginia Historical Genealogical this week or next weekend. We'll be in Virginia. Great. Um, we'll be in South Carolina yeah. next spring. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we travel. They travel. Yep. They travel. <laughs> <laughs> and like me, they're, you know, kind of a, a family business. You you just have to do it from your home and say, we've got, I love, we love to hear the voice of the, of the grandchild. Yeah. Oh, sorry about crowd. that. Well, no, no. Here. We're glad to do that. So anyway, well, thank you so much for having us guys. I really appreciate, or for joining me today, guys. I think that's going to be a real, a real help. I know I learned quite a bit from this, so I'm really glad that you guys are here. And um, I actually look forward to seeing you again in person sometime soon. So, so. thank you. Okay. All right, guys. So that is, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. So if you um, have further questions, if you're watching the replay on this, have a question, feel free to ask the question in the comments. Um, we'll be sure and watch those comments and get those um, questions answered. Oh, Debbie has another question. Hang on. Original size helps to determine age of photo. Right. Um, yeah, Debbie, it can. Um, if you're looking at, I see what you're saying. If you're looking at like at a carte de visite or um as opposed to a cabinet card, those sizes can make a, can help you determine the age. You know, you can even have the little tiny, uh, what are they called? Um, the really tiny ones that can, again, help give you a certain age. So I see what you're saying there. Uh, you could, I think, potentially, Debbie, if you were scanning one, you may, you may devise for yourself in your labeling, um, just a set of numbers or a code for yourself. So you know what size that photo is. Mm -hmm. um, does that. Um, well, you would almost you have to. Because yeah. Any digital file isn't going to, isn't really going to give you too many clues about the original size, unless you get deep in the metadata, but just right. pulling it up and looking at it isn't going to give right. you those clues. So, but, but just like the file name could be a good idea. Yeah. Cause just like Debbie, Debbie was talking about putting the initials of a cousin she may have received a photograph from. Mm -hmm. So she knew what the original was. If you, you could do the same thing, you could just put eight by 10 or you could have a, a separate whole, whole separate code. Or if you've got them in a program that you're tagging them, just make that one of the tags. This was a daguerreotype or this was a postcard or this was a whatever in your mm -hmm. tag system. That's a good idea too. Yeah. You could tag them that way. Yeah. That's a great idea, guys. Um, I have to think about that as too more to think about than you sometimes well, realize when it comes to, well, <laughs> to to preserving those those photographs. Yep. So, um, but thank you guys for um, doing that. And again, guys, if you guys are watching the replay and have questions, feel free to ask questions. We're happy to answer them, and we'll come back in and answer them um, and cool. monitor those as well. So, and guys, feel free share this with your friends. Um, I'd love for you, other people to get a chance to listen to what Michelle and Dorothy had to say as well. And um, I will see you next week on our Facebook Live. So have a great day, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.